Thank you very much for sitting down with me today. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself? Hi, I am Doug Lyon. I'm teaching media at Leeds City College, allegedly. This is my 26th year of teaching, if you can imagine that. And um, I guess I got into everything through music, really, and accidentally falling into interviewing bands for the radio and then teaching radio. And then I got had a job in London teaching radio at University of East London. And then I got a job at teaching at the University of Brighton. I was teaching video production there. And then I came back up north. So I lived in Brighton twice and up north twice. I've been backwards and forwards twice. And um, this is probably the end of my teaching career. So this will be the full stop on the end of it. Yeah, this year. Yeah. Um, as a past tutor of Brighton University, who has lived and worked in the town, could you tell me a little bit about life in Brighton? Brighton's a funny little bubble on the south <laughs> of uh, England that is very, very dense. It used to be in competition with York for the amount of venues it had, allegedly a pub for every day of the year. So I don't know if that's still true, but Brighton has got a lot of little venues and a lot of little mini scenes. So there's a lot of like 150 capacity venues for bands. And there's a lot of sort of burlesque and dancer stuff and theatre and all, sort of, all sorts of weird and wonderful things in Brighton. It's a great, great place and it has its own arts festival that's like Edinburgh. You could do something every night of the week in Brighton. You know, it's a very intense place and it's also got a uni two universities and colleges so there's a lot of students there as well, yeah. It's a happening place. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the music scene in Brighton personally? Uh, the music scene in Brighton is great for dance music and not that brilliant for bands because it's that jump from little bands to big bands is really hard for Brighton bands. They always have to go up the road to London to make it. So it's kind of, and because there's BIM there, the music college, you could throw a stick in Brighton, you hit a musician. There's so many musicians in Brighton, it's a bit oversaturated and obviously they all want to play. So there's lots of little local gigs that are great, but to go from a little band playing to 50, 100 people to a medium sized band who are playing to like two or 3,000 doesn't really happen in Brighton. There's a big venue that's like, I don't know how many that is, the Brighton Centre, probably like five, 6,000, but there's not really anything in between. Um. I understand that you have an interest in live music and independent bands. What first got you into music? I don't know really what, what it, I mean, I, I was 13 in 1977, so previous to the punk thing, I was already into like Sweet and Susie Quattro and T-Rex and Bowie and all that stuff. I was like people who dressed up, I loved all that glam stuff, but it wasn't didn't really exist anywhere in those days there was no internet obviously hardly any telly there were three channels that finished at midnight there weren't really any music programs apart from top of the pops which was terrible and everybody mined on it so it was a weird time because you didn't really know anything about the bands or anything you didn't know anything really um but it it was the thing that made sense of my weird and wonderful life getting into music and then when the punk thing happened in 77 for me that was it. I just started going to see the, all the punk bands at 13 and never stopped, really. Um, <clears throat> how has your music taste changed from when you were younger compared to now? Uh, when I was younger, I was a terrible music snob and now I'm much more open. I think that's what happens as you get older. When, when I was a punk, the whole punk thing was, you know, get rid of the hippies, all the old big bands like The Who and Led Zeppelin and all those bands that paved the way for it were regarded as dinosaurs and it, it, it was very snobby in a way but I loved that edge to things where you liked a certain thing and anything that wasn't that you didn't like it it made it a scene and then when you get clubs around that where I loved it in the early 80s where everybody started dressing up with the new romantic goth thing and we'd, we'd have club nights usually on a Wednesday night on their downtime or whatever but the bouncer on the door would stop normal people getting in Sorry, not, not, not tonight, mate. Come back on a Friday or a Saturday. We're like, yay, we've got protection. So that was really great. I loved that scene. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard of the bands Lovejoy? I have, because you told me about them yeah, last time. Yeah, in our projects, <laughs> yeah. Um, 
If I told you that Lovejoy, which is a Brighton band, had risen from zero to 1.6 million monthly listeners, and they have sold out tours across the UK and Europe what, within two years, what would you say about that? Well, good for them. I'm glad to hear that it's still possible. I mean, it sounds it sounds unlikely in the last yeah. two years. During COVID. Yeah. Why? Why? Why was that then? How did that? Happen? Um, I think it's because the band was able to gain such um a large audience because they spent all the time that they had inside working on the band and getting everything ready to start producing music. Mm. They had more time to sit down and think about how they were going to make it big. Well, good for them. I mean, it sounds like they've used that weird time where nothing was happening very well and cashed all the chips in. I mean, it, I mean, it's a very weird time for bands now because people don't really buy music anymore. And a lot of bands are paying their mortgages and their bills by selling T-shirts now. It's a, it's a strange time, but good for them. I'm glad to hear it's still possible, really. Um, what are your favourite bands to listen to? <laughs> well, I do a podcast uh, fairly regularly with my daughter, and between us we put the tunes together, and you know that ranges from anything from the 50s to today. I don't know about favourite, I don't really see it like that anymore, like yeah. favourite band. My favourite band's Killing Joke. They're like an old punk band that I think have got better with time. But now it's more just like, I think people dot about listening to tunes now more than getting into a scene or a particular band, and I'm probably a bit more like that myself. But I'd say Killing, The Sweet were my favourite band of all time. Do you know them? I haven't heard of them, no. Gl glam rock band, uh, but Killing Joke have taken over from The Sweet. Yeah. Um. Which famous musicians do you admire? Um, <coughs> which do I admire? That's quite a difficult question, isn't it? I mean, a lot of the punk bands that I was listening to when I was 13, who yeah. are now, I mean, I'm 58, so a lot of those bands are now in their 60s, and most of them are still playing. I do admire that. I mean, I don't think anybody thought back in the day that that would. St you know, Blondie is still playing. You know, like all the, all those old bands are still going to this day. The Damned and all that lot. So, I don't know whether I admire that because you sort of think, well, maybe you should have put it down a long time ago, or maybe you just haven't got anything else to do. But I think if you're in, in a great band, it's quite a hard thing to move on from. Yeah. Like being in that being in that position. But I think anybody who can kind of take charge of their own artistic integrity from, you know, Madonna to Gary Newman to, you know, whoever's knocking around these days who's still left, who hasn't got into trouble for what they did in the 70s. And then last but not least today, if you could go to your dream gig for any artist, whether they're dead or alive, uh -huh. who would that be? Um, well, I'd love to have seen Elvis in his heyday. I'd yeah. love to have seen Jimi Hendrix in his heyday. I'd love to have seen the Pistols right at the start. So yeah, what all the Doors as well right at the start. Any any of those really back in the day when they were just coming up that would have been amazing. Yeah, that sounds interesting. Thank you for your time. No worries. Thank you. Thank you for thanking me. <sighs> that well really done. Quick, didn't it? Yeah. It did actually. Is that right? Yeah, it was great, thank you. Is it all recorded? Imagine it just didn't get recorded. Like